Well, Singapore Airlines narrowed its net loss for the last financial year after a stronger second half, which saw more travel resume and higher demand for cargo. The national carrier trimmed its net loss by about 78 percent to $962 million. Total revenue doubled to $7.6 billion. The group carried 3.9 million passengers. That's up sixfold from the year before as uh, border curbs eased in the last six months. By the end of the financial year, passenger capacity was operating at 51 percent of pre-COVID levels, double from April 2021. Uh, cargo revenue jumped 60 percent on year, hitting a record $4.3 billion. SIA said this was driven by strong demand amid global supply chain disruptions. But group revenue, group expenditure rose by 30 percent to $8.2 billion, driven by higher fuel costs. It said inflationary pressures, particularly on fuel prices, remain a concern. The board is not proposing a final dividend. Well, Singapore Airlines shares closed up about 2% today uh, before the results were announced. The stock had hit the highest in nearly three weeks, rising as much as 3.2% during the session. And for more, we have Brendan Sobey, independent analyst and consultant from Sobey Aviation, joining us. Well, Brendan, no forecast on when Singapore Airlines will return to profitability. Uh, what is your take? Yeah, no, it's it's going to be a while before they return to profitability. They they had, were profitable in the December quarter, but they swung back to a loss in the March quarter, which um, was expected. And of course, for the full year, uh, we're again uh, in the red uh, now for the third consecutive year after never having a loss in their history. Um, but it's going to it's a it's a really long recovery. I mean, the traffic has really picked up at the beginning of this fiscal year, uh, April and May. But that doesn't mean they're going to be profitable this year. I would expect they'd still be loss making this year. And, um, you know, maybe the year after that, there, there's a chance they can swing back to the black. But a lot, there's a lot of unknown, a lot of variables out there that a lot of questions we need answers to before we really have a good idea on, on when they will um, be back uh, in, the, in the black on, on an annual basis. Yeah, Brendan, speaking of those variables, uh, how significantly would the high prices of oil continue to weigh on SIA? I mean, assuming that the Ukraine conflict does not end soon, could those costs be passed on to consumers? I mean, we already saw that high oil prices had weighed on the carrier in its latest results. Yeah, but fuel prices are a concern, you know, for the entire industry, not just Singapore Airlines. And, you know, it comes at a time when demand is is reco recovering and improving, um, but you, you can't always uh, pass on those higher fuel costs to the passenger. There's a lot of competition out there. There's a lot of airlines uh, competing very, you know, aggressively, particularly in Southeast Asia, bringing back capacity, um, you know, after basically hibernating for a couple of years. Um, and it's just, you know, airfares just can't be increased so easily. So um, a lot of that, a lot of that puts pressure on profits and um, makes it more hard to uh, turn, return to uh, the black. Uh, so this is a concern, and fuel, we don't know where fuel prices will go. It could go even higher or stay very high for a long period because of that geopolitical situation, which also has other other ramifications economically. Uh, you know, which also you know has uh, a concern uh, for the aviation industry. So it's it's not really um, you know clear skies ahead. It's certainly a lot better than it was the last two years, but a lot is out there that is weighing down on on SIA and the overall aviation sector right now. Yeah, and then turning to cargo, I mean, we saw pretty good results in cargo, but uh, is this likely to continue, particularly as the war drags on, and also with, with China's COVID nineteen curbs taking a toll on global supply chains? Yeah, I mean, cargo overall remains very strong, you know, much stronger than it was prior to the pandemic. And Singapore Airlines continues to rely heavily on cargo, as do other airlines in this region. But yeah, it, cargo has, um, you know, taken a bit of a reduction in terms of um, uh, revenues and profitability uh, compared to the December quarter. And um, it, it's down from its highs. Uh, so it's 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 not as bright. It's not as bright as it was um, during the pandemic. But fortunately, passengers are are coming back now in big numbers. So so that outweighs the uh, s somewhat the reduction in cargo. Yeah, and also with, with passengers coming back, you know, with the release of pent up travel demand, uh, is SIA facing the same labor challenges that many in the hospitality sector are struggling with? Yeah, um, I mean, the, the entire aviation sector is, is mm -hmm. globally, including in Singapore, is, is struggling with these manpower issues. SIA is not alone. Singapore is not alone. We all, we've all seen a lot of the issues that, you know, airlines and airports in Europe 
uh, you know, have had as, as capacities come back very rapidly in Europe at much faster uh, pace than what we've even seen here in Southeast Asia. Uh, so, so that that is that is a big concern. It's not just Singapore Airlines, which is now you know hiring again flight attendants, and it's very hard to recruit uh, Singapore Airlines and particularly Scoot because you know you have you know it's hard to find people in Singapore to, you know, willing to take these positions, and they have to bring people in from overseas. It takes time to train. It's 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 a long process, uh, and it sometimes doesn't come back quickly enough, you know, to meet the demand. Uh, but it's not only the airline; it's also ground handling, which is the real pain point right now. I think globally, but also in Singapore, uh, SAT which is the main ground handler uh, and which SI you know used to own uh, now still has a stake in uh, and still uses that, that that's where a lot of the attention right now is uh, as the government is trying to resolve this issue so that it doesn't slow down the recovery at the moment you know the, there is a concern actually that that um, you know the manpower issue at Changi um, and, and at the ground handler uh, actually could uh, potentially you know uh, you know cause uh, a slower recovery so so there's a lot of tension on trying to resolve that issue so that the recovery can occur as fast as we all hope it will and that you know we can get to 50 percent traffic levels um, soon we're already at 40 percent at Changi mm. uh, in April uh, Singapore Airlines group was already at 47 percent pre-covid levels in April and Changi airport was at 40 percent mm. so that's quite 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 an encouraging sign but in order to get to 50 yeah. 60 70 80 percent that manpower issue has to be resolved mm. Oh, thanks so much for that. Brendan Sobey there from Sobey Aviation.